Hey there, I am back with another deck review and today we're going to be looking at Gods of Norse from Divine Playing Card Company and designer Damas Aditya. Adamas is no stranger to playing cards. He worked with Riffle Shuffle and a couple of their decks from their more ornate line of cards. And there are a couple of my favorite from that line with Gods of Egypt and Eternal Reign. So very excited to see what Damas can do, bringing his trademark super ornate style to this theme of Norse mythology. Now the deck comes in three different versions. We're looking here at the Olive Essie version in green. We also have the second standard version with Purple Royale and the more ornate holographic version with Odin's Trophy. Now we'll get a chance to look at all three, but let's start off with the Olive Edition. All right, so of course it's done on a green tuck box and it's covered with two different colors of foil, both white and silver, and some nice light embossing to give some extra texture to the tuck box. Really beautiful design work on here. Of course, you get the name of the deck, Gods of Norse, uh, stamped up there at the top. And then lots of fantastic line work. Of course, your eyes drawn to the center image here of Odin himself, the king of the gods, the Allfather. Uh, you can always identify him by that eye patch or the single eye. Uh, the legend says that he uh, gouged out his own eye in his quest for knowledge. So part of the sacrifice that he made for wisdom. Uh, but that's not the only design element on here. There's so much going on. All sorts of little details to pick up on and all of them giving little nods to different aspects of Norse mythology. You'll get the wings here, maybe a reference to the wings of the Valkyries or the serpent twisting up here on both sides of the tuck box, uh, possibly a depiction of Jormungandr himself, the world serpent. And of course the line work that's filling in all that detail very Scandinavian inspired pattern, very much has that feel of like Celtic knots, uh, just a beautiful twisting pattern all the way around the tuck box. Really cool look to it. On the sides here, premium playing cards. Other side, divine playing card company. You get your ad copy there at the bottom. Also mentions this is made in Taiwan. Uh, these decks are printed by the Taiwan playing card company. Top there just has the name of the deck once again, partially obscured by that seal. Uh, and then the foiled and embossed version of the back design of the cards. So we'll get more into those details of that super ornate design in a second. Finishes out with the die cut foiled tuck seal here. Beautifully uh, cut into the shape of like a Viking helmet here. Uh, but the line work on here you'll see makes up an image of a tree, a nod to Yggdrasil, the world tree, one of the sacred trees in Norse mythology. And you get the pair of ravens here in the middle, the two ravens are the pets of Odin himself. It is numbered here out of the uh, 2200 deck edition. And then as you open it up, some more beautiful foil work on the interior as well. The uh, inner flap here has an image of Yggdrasil once again, and you get these almost Thor's hammer-like images on the smaller inner flaps. And of course you get some fantastic interior foil as well. Right away, you'll see the uh, Thor's hammer there, Mjolnir, peeking its way out of the tuck box, but there's an entire scene printed on the interior of the tuck as well. A little bit hard to show on camera, although you can see the little peak of Odin as he makes his way through a doorway into some unknown land beyond. But there's an entire scene of Odin's hall printed on the interior that really looks fantastic. I'll put an image up here on screen just so you can see the whole thing for yourself. But fantastic job on the tuck box. Just a really striking look to it overall, but let's get into the cards because that's what it's all about. We'll start with the back design. So much going on here. Lots of detail just crammed into this card, but for me, looks beautiful and still flows. The design work on this one is absolutely outstanding. Of course, in the center here, the uh, two Viking helmets are what draw the eye first. And then you'll see Thor's Mjolnir making its way from the top and the bottom. And then lots of other little details. The longer you look at this, the more you'll be able to pick out. You know, you'll see things like the Valkyrie wings, the wolves here, probably a nod to Fenrir, one of the gods uh, who took the form of a wolf. Again, Jormungandr, the world serpent, twisting its way up on the deck. And all of it kind of comes together really cohesively and it forms a fully two-way back design. Really impressively done. Love the super thin white poker border and really like that it's kind of broken up slightly by the design elements to give it just a little bit more organic of a feel. Fantastic look to it. The greens and those metallic silvers really look great together. Uh, although I will say the metallic silver here, not quite as shiny if you're used to metallics on like USBCC or Cardamudi, they do a much 
better job of brighter ink colors, but still a fantastic look to this overall. All right, so that's the back design, uh, but now into the Joker. So the two identical Jokers showcase the story of a character named Mimir, who is the wisest man who ever lived, and that's him there in the center. Now there's some versions of the myth that claim that Mimir lived in a house under the branches of the sacred tree Yggdrasil, where he also had a small well. Uh, and in Odin's quest for knowledge, Odin actually gouged out his own eye, dropped it into the well, simply for the chance to drink from that well in order to receive its wisdom. And the Joker here, a fantastic depiction of Mimir and elements of that myth. Uh, you can see him living among the roots of the tree as it spreads out above him, all in that beautiful style. Uh, and lots of little details to really pick up on as well. You'll get things like the unnamed eagle that's said to live in the branches of Yggdrasil, or the small Valnuts here on the side. The uh, nod to Odin's role in the story. The Valnut, those three interlocking triangles, are one of the classic symbols of Odin himself. And of course, beautiful ornate styling all the way around. And one of my favorite parts, the look of Mimir himself, that striking look right in the center. I love the tattooed runes around the eyes, those twisting ram horns coming out of his head. Really striking look to it. Interestingly, they depicted Mimir here as being the one with one eye. Usually it's Odin who's the one with one eye. Uh, Mimir did not gouge his own eye out, but uh, maybe just a little bit of a tie and kind of bringing elements of Odin into the story as well but really nice Jokers. I love that and I love the story behind them as well. Now, all four of the aces in this deck are oversized pips and fully custom, but the power ace is definitely the ace of spades. That huge central pip, uh, of course, continues with that Scandinavian styling. You get those twisting patterns with the line work all around. And in the center, there's a symbol called the Vegvisir. Uh, it's a symbol that served as a sort of mystical compass that would guide its bearer to safety even in the roughest of waters. And so that's what that kind of circular symbol there is with the different points coming out. And then the runes surrounding it and then lots of twisting Celtic elements all the way around. At the top sit two of Odin's ravens. This is Hugin and Munin, or maybe it's Munin and Hugin, uh, but Odin would send this pair out to the land and they would fly all through the land and gather information to bring back to Odin himself. So very cool look to that one. Uh, the other three aces are only slightly less ornate, but each one of them has little elements that tell a small story and a piece of mythology in their own right. The diamond one to me looks a little bit like a depiction of a wolf here. You can kind of see the twisting wolf head with the mouth right there. Uh, and the wolf is probably a reference to Fenrir, who is the legendary wolf wolf uh, form of, uh, or a god who took a wolf form. Uh, one of the most fearsome and evil of the uh, of the gods from mythology. Uh, next up is the club. This is probably my favorite of them. It has the image of Yggdrasil, the world tree here at the top, and then Jormungandr, the world serpent, the gigantic serpent who is said to be large enough to encircle the entire world. You can see him twisted here in a sort of infinity shape on the bottom. That's my favorite of the uh, three uh, three other aces. And then finally, we get to the Ace of Hearts and it has a majestic uh, deer head here with the antlers spreading up to form that classic cart shape. Uh, this might be a reference to Elkbirnir. Elk I think I'm pronouncing that right, but Elkbirnir was a deer who was said to stand on the roof of Odin's own great hall. Uh, and so that's what I think the deer is a reference to. But fantastic set of aces, just really nicely done on those. Uh, the number cards are by the standard we've seen through the rest of that, relatively simple, but they do feature small, fully custom pips here. And again, continuing that theme of really ornate and skillfully done uh, line work to just give them that extra little bit of interest. And the black ones are your classic black, your red, they're gonna be uh, uh, kind of that classic red crimson sort of color. Uh, but all of them have that really nice styling to the pips. So well done, nothing too crazy on these but enough to give them some extra interest as custom pips in their own right. And then there's your hearts. But then we get on to the court cards and for a mythology theme deck, you know the court cards are really gonna be where it's at. And yet again, we're getting a look at some fantastic artwork on these. Uh, each one of the courts depicts one of the pantheon of the well-known Norse gods. And they are like everything else in the deck hand-drawn in stunning and ornate detail. You can really see that right away. 
The green and silver, great accent colors on this one. Although again, that silver, not quite as metallic. Uh, but each one of them has little hints to pick up on who some of the different characters are. So we'll get to talk about each one of the characters as we go through the deck. So let's get started with the Jack. Now the Jack of Spades shows Baldur, who is the son of Odin. Now he's not actually mentioned too many times in Norse mythology. He's actually most known for the story of his own death when Loki tricked Baldur's own brother into striking him with the only thing that was capable of harming him, mistletoe of all things. And so his own brother threw mistletoe at him and inadvertently completely killed him. Uh, interesting little uh, story on that one. But there's lots of little details here that'll help you to pick up on the Jack's identity as you go through. For example, you'll see the sun here. There's probably a nod to his role as the god of the summer sun. But if you can't pick up on it just by looking at the details here, there is a little bit of a cheat sheet. The runes over here, if you translate this into Old Norse, will actually spell out the name of the god. So this actually says Baldur in uh, Old Norse styling. So you get that little extra cheat there. So that's the Jack of Spades, but moving on to the Queen of Spades, we see the most famous goddess in all of Norse mythology. This is Freya. Uh, she was the wife of, a, uh, of Odin and associated with love and beauty. And of course, the King of Spades is that all-father himself, Odin with his one eye, that trademark eye patch is the symbol of his sacrifice for wisdom. And here over his shoulder, you'll see the image here of the raven. Uh, same on the other side, those twin ravens that sit on his shoulder. Uh, the ones that would feed him information over time because this one's almost like actually whispering in his ear over there. So love the look of that one. All right, but now on to the giant diamonds. Jack of Diamonds, this is probably my favorite of all the Norse characters. This is Heimdall. He's the stoic guardian of Bifrost, the rainbow bridge that served as the entrance to Asgard, connected Asgard, the realm of the gods, to Midgard, the land of men. Uh, and, of course, he's holding Yallerhorn, the horn that he would use to warn of any invaders. And you can see another image of it there over his shoulder, that twisting horn that would blow extremely loud warning to the rest of the gods. Very cool to it. And like I said, one of my favorite of all the characters. And then the queen and king are actually a pair, and one that I really had never heard of personally. This is Egir and Ran, uh, the male and female personification of the sea. And both are shown here. They're sort of ordained in all sorts of scales and shells, just a very sort of oceany theme, of course, to them, including the waves or the shells that you can see in the little image behind them. Uh, and according to legend, their own offspring, their daughters, are actually the personifications of the waves themselves. So very cool and a, a pair of characters that I personally never heard of. But on to the clubs. And we start off with Loki, uh, who is, of course, made famous thanks to the Avengers, definitely has the look of the Avengers character here. Uh, but the trickster god was the adopted brother of Thor, and one of the most complex characters as you go through the mythology. Uh, he sometimes assists the gods, other times he's attacking them, so he might be friend, he might be f uh, a foe of some sort. And over his shoulder, you can see his most famous offspring, Jormungandr, the world serpent, or I guess I should say his most infamous offspring. Uh, but the queen and the king continue the story of Loki with the depiction here of his parents. This is the giant Farbaut, Farbauti and his wife Laufi, who are depicted on the king and the queen. So Loki and his parents make up the club courts. All right, but now finally we get to the hearts, and we'll start off with the king of hearts, the one that everybody probably could have guessed would be in here somewhere. This, of course, is Thor, the god of thunder. And naturally, he's holding his famous hammer, Mjolnir, that hammer that only he is capable of lifting. Uh, the winged helmet here is kind of part of his look, mostly thanks to the movies. Actually, most of the time in Norse mythology, he's not depicted with a helmet at all. You just see his long flowing hair. But for whatever reason, maybe drawing more inspiration from the movies instead, we get the depiction of him here with his, uh, with his helmet on. And the queen continues his family line. This is Sif, who is his wife, uh, Thor's wife. Uh, and she's shown here in her role as the goddess of wheat and harvest. So you can see the wheat there in one hand and then the corn in her other hand. So uh, providing the food and the plenty for everybody in, uh, everybody in the land. And the Jack, this is another one I didn't know much about. This is one of Thor's sons, Modi. Uh, his name translates to wrath. And so he takes on one of the aspects of his father, Thor. Uh, he was a powerful warrior in his own right and was actually 
one of the few survivors of the great battle Ragnarok that killed most of the other gods. So very cool look to that one as the final one of the courts. And that is it. That is the fantastic deck and the beautiful set of courts. But that is only one version of the deck. We want to take a quick look at the other two versions so you guys can see a little bit of those as well, starting off with the Purple Royale version. Now, for the most part, these are going to be just color swaps overall. So you can see this one now is purple. Again, carries two different colors of foil, this time white and gold instead of white and silver. So definitely in some lights gives you a little bit better contrast. Although for me, that gold in certain lights kind of doesn't show up quite as well. But hit it in the right light, the contrast on this one, really, really nice. Uh, so great look to this one. The purple swapping out for the greens and the golds for the silvers. Personally, I think I like the gold and silver or the green and silver a little bit better, but this one looks nice as well. Also numbered out of that 2200 deck. So the two standard ones are numbered out of 2200. And the cards themselves get a little bit of a color swap as well. So the back design here done in gold and kind of a, a bronze color, I guess I would say, not a true super bright gold. And the faces themselves now bring in some of that purple and bronze color as well, both on the uh, jokers, the aces, as well as when you get to the court cards themselves. You get a color change all the way throughout the deck. I will say it is dramatic enough of a color change that I think it really just kind of brings some new life to the deck overall. So nice look to the purple one as well, uh, the second of the three versions. So those are the two standard versions of the deck. Uh, up to you on which one you like better. I think the contrast may be a little bit better on the purple one, but overall, I think the green kind of fits thematically a little bit better, but that's kind of up to you. But then finally, we get the most limited version. This is Odin's Trophy done in beautiful holographic foil. Now, I'm not sure how well it's showing up here on camera, but the silvery foil you see here is actually has that rainbow glow to it overall. And for me, I think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity to not name this edition the Bifrost edition, uh, paying, a, paying homage to that rainbow bridge that connected the realms. Uh, but instead chose to call it Odin's Trophy. Uh, so the golds here are paired with that holographic foil against the black card uh, card stock on this one. Really nice look to it overall. And you'll see this one's a little bit more limited. So the other two were 2,200. This one's out of just 1,300. And of course, we're going to see more holographic as we get to the cards themselves. Most of the design work is the same. But on the cards, we get a color swap on the faces here. A lot more kind of gold, almost a yellowish gold color on this one with little accents of red. Uh, and again, that color scheme is going to continue as we go through. So the yellows and reds, now the new kind of dominant color scheme. But the real standout on this one is with the backs. This is a fully foiled back design, all done in holographic foil. And I will say, you know, at my first instinct on this one was the holographic foil seemed a little bit excessive. And I still think maybe it does. Although I think just the simple change of renaming this the Bifrost edition would have helped it to make more sense with the theme, that rainbowy color. Uh, and for me, would have put this one over the top. So I don't know, I still like the deck. And I guess in my mind, I'm gonna think of this as the Bifrost edition, makes it a much better deck to me overall. Uh, but that holographic foil with the darker undertones in the back with that bronze color and the black, just a really striking look to this one and makes this one definitely the most luxurious of the three decks. Now, as far as handling, all these handle surprisingly well. Not as well as USBCC or Cardamundi, but especially even this one, like the fully foiled deck. Not bad on fans and has a nice soft feel to it overall. Kind of like Cardamundi, very thin cardstock. Feels very soft, although it's a little bit uh, a little bit firmer than you know Cardamundi if you're used to that. So kind of sits for me halfway between Cardamundi and USBCC in terms of how it feels. But those two, I think, handle a little bit better. But anyway, that is it. That is the look at Gods of Norse in all three editions from Divine Playing Card Company and Damas Aditya. A great deck. I love mythological themes in general, and Norse mythology is just such a rich area to dive into. Love that the deck went into a couple of the lesser known myths going into Thor's son or the god and goddess of the sea. Now, ones that you don't see quite as often in Norse mythology. So I thought that was really cool too. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this look at Gods of Norse. Uh, I enjoyed it. Hope you did too. Make sure to subscribe for more deck reviews, more unboxings. Let me know what else you want to see, and I'll see you for the next one.